Once this is complete, we can go back um, closer into the fall when the rains begin and we can spread a fertilizer and a grass seed mixture that also has some of the legumes in it and we get a nice grass growing on, on an area where once vegetation was not possible. What you do now is you pick up each bag and what you want to do is you want to take your two fingers here and pinch the bottom corner and then with the remaining fingers on your hand hold the top of the bag loosely. Then you grab the other bottom corner with the other hand and as you fling it this way you release your fingers and the top of the bag is released and the lime comes out in a nice even spread. Do you want to watch and then you can try? Yeah. Just like that. Excellent. As you can see in this area, we have some of the white birch that have recolonized on their own. Their seeds are very light and the wind blows the seeds long distances. So in some areas they've been able to regenerate. But what happens in Sudbury is because of the soil conditions, the trees die back and all the, the top branches die and then it sprouts again from the bottom. So instead of having one tree, we have about five or six sprouting from the bottom here. Once we spread the lime on the ground and neutralize the soil, that'll be a better environment for this tree to thrive. Once we're, we're completed with our liming activities and we've spread the fertilizer and grass seed and have some grass coverage in this area, we can then go back next spring and plant our tree seedlings. And generally the program plants um, all the trees that would be native to this area. So you're looking at all of the pine trees and some spruces and uh, some of the other deciduous trees like uh, the, uh, the maple that we plant. My name is Rob Skelly. I'm the manager of tourism with the city of Greater Sudbury. Promoting Sudbury as a tourism destination is a relatively new concept. 20 to 30 years ago, the community suffered from an image of degradation, pollution, and absence of greenery. Uh, the land reclamation program was started with that in mind to help uh, improve Sudbury's image as an ecological area. And so, uh, with the beginning of that program, the community rallied to help develop uh, important tourism infrastructure. Uh, facilities like Science North and uh, Dynamic Earth, which uh, feature stories about Sudbury's beginning and, and its, its history, its development, and focus on uh, showing visitors to the community the mining history of the area, um, help, to, uh, in, help to improve the local economy and, um, and tell the story of Sudbury as it is today. Science North, Dynamic Earth Geoscience Center, shows us mining operations from the 1800s to the present and how the geological processes work here in Sudbury. Let's take the underground tour. and I'll be your tour guide today, okay? We have to talk about Sudbury a little bit. 1.85 billion years ago, there was a meteorite that hit Sudbury. This meteorite was about 10 kilometers wide, and when it hit the Sudbury Basin, it created such an impact that it made cracks all around the basin of the Earth's crust. So all the material from inside the Earth seeped through from the mantle and filled up these cracks with heavy metals, and that's what we mine today. So without this impact, the mining industry and the community of Sudbury wouldn't be here. What do we mine here in Sudbury? Nickel, copper, iron, sulfur, cobalt. There's about 13 metals here. Do we have any miners in the crowd? Yeah, of course, you're under the age of 18. Well, they said, righty tidy, lefty loosey. There we go. We're all safe and sound. The deepest mine in Sudbury is 2.2 kilometers underground. Is it hot or cold in that mine? Someone said hot. Why is it hot, sir? That's right, you're getting closer to the core. The temperature in that mine is 49 degrees Celsius. So you have to keep the ventilation going and the air conditioning so the miners can breathe. So yes, there's rock. What's covering the rock? Wire. Wire, that's right. We have fence. It's called meshing and it prevents these little rocks here from falling on our heads. It's very normal for rocks to detach from the ore body, but we have to keep it from falling on the heads of the miners. So what would be the most important thing in the mine today? Safety. Safety. Safety, that's right. So the miners would use different amounts of dynamite. If the richer the ore, the softer it is. I'm gonna ask everyone to stay together, go all the way down just to the left, and stand on the blasting platform. Five, four, I can't hear you, three, two,
We're now in the McLeod Rock Gallery, and I see some interesting rocks that show us the mining history as well as the mineral riches in this area. Certainly. The focus here, we saw the big globe upstairs. The focus here is Sudbury ore. So this is what we're mining here in Sudbury, where the nickel and the copper comes from. And we wanted people to be able to see that, but also see the riches of the rest of the province of Ontario. So here we have a map that looks at all the different materials, all the different rocks that are extracted from the province. And this is by no means exhaustive. There's a lot more than that. But we do get gold, we do get silver, we get cobalt, but we also get halite, which is salt. We get mica, which has ap applications in the makeup industry, talc as well as a filler. There's feldspar, there's sandstone. A lot of building materials also are extracted from Ontario mines. Some of them look beautiful. Well, this is amethyst. This is Ontario's gemstone. Um, so this is a quartz that is uh, colored purple. And, and this finished. Yes, the finished ones and the polish. This one, which has more of a reddish tinge, comes from Thunder Bay. What gallery are we in? We're in the Earth Gallery. The big focus of this gallery is understanding planet Earth with this big globe and understanding the geological processes that change the surface of the Earth. So we talk about volcanoes here, and we have some of the products that come out of a Canadian volcano, Mount Meager. We you also let us touch. Yes, we let you touch, touch and hold and do all sorts of things. This is also rock that's unique to Sudbury. We only find it here. It's called Sudbury Breccia. Here we talk about earthquakes. Of course, earthquakes have been very big in the news lately. So we talk about earthquakes and their effect on different populations. We talk about tsunami and how our earthquakes actually created is through plate tectonics. So people can see how the earth has changed and evolved over the past 200 million years with this these puzzles. This is quite a puzzle. It is, it is. And this one, it actually is quite fun because this is a 3D puzzle that people can take apart and put together and really understand how the internal structure of the earth is made. I think we can have mining and we can have forestry. They're both industries that use natural resources. And we can have them without destroying the environment, without polluting it so much that nobody wants to live there or that the ecosystems are lost for forever. It is possible to reduce the, what you might call the ecological footprint, the area within which there is ecological damage from the, um, from the mining industry. And is it possible, in fact, to, to cut forests and to, to harvest trees and still retain a, a forest of variety? You have to understand the science of what you're dealing with. You have to understand what the emissions from your smelter stacks are doing. You have to understand the way that you harvest trees, how that fits with the natural succession and the natural replacement of vegetation in a, in a forest. Once you understand the science, then you've taken the first step. You then have to make the commitment, the financial commitment, and more and more and more companies are prepared to do that, partly because they're driven by legislation and partly also because I think there's a new ethic out there in, in companies that, um, that use our natural resources. There's the belief that it is important, in fact, to do the right thing and not just to put money into the, um, into the bank. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite confident that something akin to what people call sustainable development is indeed possible.